When adding dimensions in Autodesk Revit, the best tool to use, in my opinion, is the Aligned Dimension tool. You can find that up here on your Quick Access Toolbar. You can also go to the Annotate tab and choose Aligned here as well. With the Aligned Dimension tool, you're clicking on Lines. So those lines are typically the center lines or the exterior or interior faces of walls. When dimensioning, we want to put in three rows of dimensions around the outside of our drawings. The first row of dimensions is going to include any exterior walls, any interior walls. When we go to exterior walls, we go to the outside exterior surface. When we go to interior walls, we go to their centers. We also include any doors and windows, and we dimension to the center of those items. In your second row, we're only doing walls. And then your third row, we're doing the overall dimension of the house. So as I dimension across the top of this part, I've done my aligned dimension tool. You can see that I currently have wall faces set here, which is often how I'll dimension because I like to use the tab key to switch to centers when I need to. So I'm gonna start on the outside exterior surface of the first wall here. I'm not getting it, so I'm gonna press the tab key until I have it. Then again, the center of any doors, windows, or walls. So I'll get the center of those three. Then to the exterior of this one. Again, I'm getting the center line, so I'll tab to the outside surface. Then I can go to the center of this window, to the center of this wall, center of this sliding door, center of these two windows, center of this wall, center of these three windows, the exterior surface of this outside wall and the exterior surface of this outside wall. So you'll notice I've got a big chain of dimensions here and I can go up and place my first dimension. Usually as a rule the first dimension is half an inch away from the house. However, when we have additional things such as the window tags there and maybe some leader text, sometimes you can't put it that close. So I'll just place it just to the outside of those tags. Now notice that I did not dimension to the interior walls that do not touch this outside wall. Later you would go back in and dimension any other walls that weren't dimensioned anywhere else. So I'll escape to deselect those. For my second row of dimensions, only walls. So I will start on the outside surface of this exterior wall, the outside surface of this exterior wall, to the center of that one, center of this one, to this exterior surface, and finally again I'll press tab to go to this exterior surface. Now as I bring my mouse in I'll see it start to snap to predefined increments. So I can click right above the last row. So for my third row, again this is going to be just an overall dimension, so I'm going to go from using my Align dimension tool, outside surface. Again, I'm just pressing tab to switch me over. I could also use the drop down list up here and choose wall faces. And again, I should be able to snap to that point. Now, one of the things I want to point out to you at this point in time do not stress out over the correct values. If you've got windows or doors or walls not placed in the appropriate spot, you would have already lost points for that at this point. So there's no sense in spending a lot of time trying to get these values just right. What I'm looking at in this section is proper dimensioning techniques. Row one is all walls, windows, and doors. Row two is all walls. Row three is your overall dimension. So again, if the values are off a little bit, you can adjust them if you want, but don't spend a ton of time on that because you would have already lost points for that. Another thing I want to point out to you is I don't want to repeat dimensions. So if I have a situation like this where I've got 7 foot 4 inch in here twice, I want to get rid of the first one. Now if I click on this first one and press delete on my keyboard, the entire row goes away. So I don't want to do that. I'll undo to bring that back. Instead what I want to do is click on the row of dimensions and up top here in my ribbon I can choose edit witness lines. Then I will click on any witness line I would like to remove. You can also use this tool to add new witness lines. But I want to remove this right side line, so I'll click on it. 
you can see the dimensions gone. This one's kind of weird. Instead of pressing escape or anything like that, you just click out in space to tell it you're done. I can escape to deselect. So on this exercise, you're only going to be dimensioning the upper part of the house as well as the left side of the house. So all the rules that I just discussed there on the top, you can apply to the left side of the house as well. So that is a quick look at some standard dimensioning techniques in Autodesk Revit.